This is Maria Lorena Lehman with SensingArchitecture.com. In today's video, I'm going to explore how architectural design affects occupant choice and what exactly that means for your occupants. Because hopefully as you design architecture for your occupants, you aren't just simply trying to meet a list of programmatic requirements and trying to insert those programmatic requirements and spatial functions into allotted spaces without giving some serious consideration into the relationships between those programmatic elements. Because each of them speaks with one another as your occupant travels through those spaces and travels from one to the other. So as you can see in this diagram below, uh, we have a diagrammatic elevator here, a stairwell here, and just a simple hallway leading outward, followed by a larger hallway-like space toward the south. Now, supposing this is your occupant that is traveling through this space, heading in this direction, they will be presented with a series of choices. First, as they're traveling through this hallway, they may decide to take the elevator if they need to travel vertically to the left, or they will have the choice to take the stairs. Of course, depending on their needs at that time, they may need to travel through this entire space as they go in this direction, or they may like to sit down. Perhaps this is a seating area for socialization. Another seating area here for socialization or contemplation or thinking space in preparation to go into whatever programmatic function might be at the other end of this hallway. Now, what might be interesting for you as an architect is to think about beyond just putting in a space for seating, what might your occupant do there? Would it help them if they had a view of nature or access to the outdoors? Would it help them if there was a sculptural park out here where perhaps seating or eating areas, eating outside could occur out here? So there's an interrelation now between the inside and the outside, which could be quite nice. On the other hand, what if they decide to take the elevator versus the stair? What does that mean for their health? What does that mean in terms of their journey upward through your architectural space? Would taking the stair be more of an aesthetic experience? Or would taking the elevator be more of an intriguing experience where the doors open to reveal the surprise which awaits them on the upper levels. And furthermore, as they're traveling in this direction up the hallway, might they get some kind of clue, perhaps earlier on in the hallway, that there is a special experience if they were to take the elevator in this direction, or a clue that the stair might be a special experience. And even from this point, you're already presenting your occupant as they see this clue with incentive to possibly turn right or left, depending upon what journey you think might be best for that particular occupant at that particular time within that particular position within your space. Furthermore, you could use wayfinding as a way to communicate with your occupant. However, don't rely too fully on wayfinding, as using architectural elements may provide a more beautiful and, and seamless solution that may actually help to uplift some of the other qualities and characteristics of your architectural space. So by designing for occupant choice, whether to give it or restrict it, you can create an architectural narrative that can take your architecture from being a place where functions and forms just happen to being a place where 
they actually thrive. And likewise, in places where they thrive, your occupants will thrive, particularly as you begin to think about where your occupants came from, whether it's the exterior or another interior room, and where they are going. So as you design, give some consideration to how your designs affect occupant choice and what that means for your occupants within your architectural spaces. This is Maria Lorena Lehman with SensingArchitecture.com.